morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is Thursday, May 21st. The Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. No school on Monday, even though we have distance learning. Make sure you thank a veteran on Monday for keeping us safe in this country. And, uh, and our goal for today is that we can determine the measure of tangents and segments based on their properties. So we really are going to be focusing on a bunch of tangent lines today. So maybe we need a little refresher on what a tangent line is. So a tangent line, do you remember, Ms. Murphy? <clears throat> a tangent line touches a circle only once. So it touches a circle once. Only once. So if I have a circle, tangent line would look something like this. There is my tangent line. And there's only one touching point. Great. Mm -hmm. So now there's something called a common tangent line. So we're going to deal with each uh, group or pair of circles together. So here are two circles and we want to talk about a common tangent line, which means that it should be tangent to both circles. So it has to touch each one only once. So I would think one of the tangent lines can go like this. I know it's not 100% accurate, but it's close enough. There we go. So notice, oh, well, of course not. This always happens to me, Miss Murphy. That's okay. There we go. There we are. So there is our tangent line. It's a common tangent line because it touches both circles only at one point. So that's a common tangent line. I'm wondering if the students know, Mrs. Telhami, why you had to move that purple tangent line down. Why wasn't it good enough where you had it before you fixed it? Like right here, when I had it here? Yes. Because it was touching this circle twice. Do we call that a tangent line? We do not. No, that's called a secant when it touches twice. S-E-C-A-N-T. So that's the difference between a tangent and a secant. Here's another common tangent line. And if I wanted to do another, here's another one. I'm not sure if you saw this one. Where it's touching the circle once here and once there. So it can cross over this way as well. So really, it's just a, an, an interesting fact to know that common tangent lines do exist. That means they would be tangent to both circles, or more than one circle. So there are the common tangent lines for these two circles. And then I could go a little bit faster for these remaining ones. Here's a common tangent line. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. I'm just sketching for you. And then The only the difference between the green circles and the red circles is there's just no space in between. Yeah. Ooh, but you can stick one in and still have one common yep. touching point. Just one right where they touch, right in the middle. Even I can have three circles. Now, this one's pretty interesting. Look at this common tangent line. Touching three circles. I'm trying to make it perfect. It's not that perfect, but it's okay. See how it touches each circle just at one point? But those are the only common tangent lines there, because if I try to go in the middle, it's not touching the third circle. And then look how interesting these pair of circles right here. They both touch each other right here at one point. So if I actually put that one tangent line right there, then that's a common tangent line with both circles. Now, if you look at this last group of circles, I can't really make a common tangent line. You see this? doesn't really work. So here there are no common tangent lines. I always like having an example that doesn't work. So you really understand what does work. And when I look at those three orange circles, it looks like something we used to learn in art class regarding perspective, I think it was called. Yeah, it does. It is called that because when something is further away, it should be smaller. 
something's closer, it should be larger. Yes. So let's just reflect back again. What is today's goal? To determine measure of tangents and segments based on their properties. Okay, so now we really understand what a common tangent line is. So let's work on more tangent lines. So <clears throat> take a look at this example right here. <clears throat> you have one circle and you have a tangent line right here. It could have continued, but it's more like a line segment. And you have a tangent here, and they're both drawn from the same external point. So from point A, I can go to either C or B on the circle. They're both tangents. If this ever happens, the rule is that these two tangents are congruent from the external point to the point on the circle. So, if so remember that external X, exit, outside. External point is a point outside the circle. So if two tangents are drawn from the same external point, then they are congruent. So this is a fact. This is a fact just to know. As if you were a lawyer going to trial, you have to apply these facts to solve coming problems. And I'm just making sure to clarify, it's, it's from the external point to the point on the circle. So even if this line continued, only this piece and this piece are the congruent parts. So it's very important to note that. And then here's another rule with a tangent line. So if a tangent line touches the end of a radius or a diameter, then those lines are perpendicular. So I'm going to write that. If a tangent line touches the end of a radius or diameter, so it has to be aligned from the center, then the lines are perpendicular. And remember what fact that gives us, knowing that something is perpendicular, that tells us we have a 90 degree angle which really opens up a whole host of thoughts when you think about right angles, right triangles, all the properties that go with that. So if you want to copy these down into your notes, that would be great. And I think it's really important to think about what Ms. Murphy just said. Because we have these 90 degree angles, so I'm going to scroll to the practice problems for a second. If you look at all of these practice problems, They've created triangles, so now if we have right triangles, so only if we have right triangles, we now need to consider everything that Ms. Murphy was just discuss discussing. Pythagorean theorem, special right triangles, Sokotoa, Hills and Sass. So this is bringing in a lot of subjects that we've done throughout the year. So you know what? It's perfect, Mrs. Tohami, that today is Thursday. It's like throwback Thursday. Yes, it is. <laughs> So, uh, Go back to remembering all these things that we learned about right triangles. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to ask you to pause the video here and see how much you can complete on your own. Obviously, we're going to go through them. Um, we're going to have the answers available for you and we'll talk you through them. But I wanted to see how much you can figure out on your own. So pause it here and come back in just a bit. Good luck. Okay, so hopefully you guys went through and did the best you can. So Ms. Murphy and I are going to take some time to go through them. So I'm looking at number one, Mrs. Telhami, and I only see one tangent line, but I also see it connected to a diameter. 
Good, and that's exactly what you should know. Here's a tangent to the end of a diameter. So what should happen right here? So that's going to create a right angle. Yes, it is. And now I can see a triangle there. I could see a 45. The other angle must be a 45 also. A 45, 45, 90 triangle. Yep. Because I know every triangle has to add up to 180 degrees. Yes, it is. So this is a 45, 45, 90. So if you remember, that's actually what kind of triangle? Do you remember the name? If I have two angles equal and a and right I, angle. It is an isosceles right triangle. Nice Do you know that was a question on News 12 today when they go around asking people if they can answer their children's math questions. Really? And both of the people they asked could not figure out what an isosceles right triangle was. Wow. So that means if I have two angles equal, that means these two sides should be equal. So if this whole thing is 10, what should this whole thing be here? It should also be 10. Good. Now let's read the question. They want us to find segment C, B. So here is C, B right here. That looks to me like it's half because it's reaching the center. Each radii should be equal. Yeah. Each radius should be equal. So, so half of 10 is 5. And that's, all, five is five. and that's all we need. Because we have the diameter is 10, which means the radius is 5. There we go. So we applied several rules to solve this. Okay, number two. So, again, I see the similar thing happening here. We have a tangent line connected to a radius. So that's going to create a right angle, right by B. All right. But they don't tell us what the other two angles are. But I'm going to look at the question. They want us to find AC, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And I see I already have two sides. Oh, so if and I already have two sides, Miss Murphy, what are we supposed to do? We can use the Pythagorean theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. It doesn't matter if you put the 8 or the 15 first. Commutative property tells us we can exchange those two. So 64 plus 225 equals 289, which is beautiful because the square root of 289 is a perfectly whole number of 17. So we get that this whole thing is 17, which is what they asked for. This is not too bad, Miss Murphy. It's not. It's a great opportunity for us to remember all of these things. And hopefully students realize that even though they're in distance learning, um, many students will be coming back next year looking to get into colleges and they have SATs. You will find many of these types of questions on SATs or ACTs, college, college entrance exams. So this is wonderful practice. Okay, so again, I see a tangent line connected to a radius, forming a right angle. And I know that every triangle, I see a triangle there is 180 degrees. Maybe I don't need to apply that fact. I, We're trying to see. find CB, right? Here. They want us to find a side. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. So if we go back and we look at the choices that Mrs. Delhami had written above this exercise, I can't use the Pythagorean theorem because I don't have two sides. It's not a special right triangle because it's not a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90. So it seems to me that we're going to have to use SOCATOA to find that side. So remember with Sokatoa, you are always 
at the angle that is labeled. So you're sitting up there like in the tree over at C. And you are looking down at that nine, which is opposite you. So that's your opposite side. And you're looking to find the side that's right next to you. Remember, Jason sits next to me, adjacent. So we have an adjacent, we have an opposite. Look at your letters up there and be reminded that the T is tan. The tan of the angle that we're at equals the opposite, which is nine, over the adjacent. And let's set ourselves up to cross multiply here by placing the tan 55 over a one. Just a quick reminder, when we're doing Sokotoa and I use sine, cosine, or tangent in my calculator, what mode do I always have to be in? I have to be in degree mode. So make sure your calculators are in degree mode before you do any math here. So I have okay, so to do degree mode, push mode, scroll down to radian and go to the right, Enter. It should, it should be in degree mode by default, correct, Mrs. Talami? Um, if you clear your calculator, when you do second plus 712, it actually puts it back into radian, so it's not okay. in default. So that's very important to check. Okay, so put it in degree mode. So let's cross multiply, which you just did, all right? So we want to get x by itself. So that means we have to get rid of the tan 55. So let's divide both sides by tan 55. And that will leave us with x by itself. So x equals 9 divided by the tan of 55, close parentheses. And if you see in blue, it says round to two decimal places. So it will be 6.30. Very nice which is a reasonable number. Again, when you're looking at your answers, does it make sense? Is it reasonable? That side is shorter than BA, so it should be somewhere around nine, but less than nine. Okay, number four. So this time we're trying to find FA. Ooh, that little segment. Yeah. And I see again, this we're applying the same property of a tangent attached to a radius forming a right angle. We have two sides of a right triangle. So we can find the entire hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. Six squared plus eight squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Six squared plus eight squared is 100. And the square root of 100 is a perfect 10. But so that is giving us all of CA. And notice the question is only asking us for FA. So we would have to divide that whole hypotenuse in half. Ah, but Miss Murphy, may I ask you a question? Do you know that it's getting cut in half? You know, I only see, I know only that CF is a radius. I think that's a better thought right there. So she knows, Ooh. she knows that this is a radius and it's six centimeters. So what is mm -hmm. this also that you just said? That's also going to have to be six. So this actually is not cut in half. Exactly. Very important not to just assume. So if the whole thing is 10 and this is 6, what should FA be? The difference of 10 and 6 is 4. See, that was almost a, a trick question that a lot of students do is they, they're like, oh, it looks like it's half. Cut it in half. Yeah. But we have, there's no property that says that gets cut in half, so we cannot assume. So, so far that wasn't too bad, Miss Murphy. No, it wasn't. It's kind of fun. All right, let's keep going. Number five. So we have our tangent radius rule, creating a right angle. Now 
Now, mm -hmm. we do know that this whole piece right here is 13. 13. And we can apply something that you just talked about in the last question, Mrs. Tahami. We could figure out CB because CB, just like the where you're pointing to right now, is also a radius, and all radii have the same measure. So we actually have two sides of a right triangle right now, mm -hmm. and we can find AB again using the Pythagorean theorem. But this time we're looking for a leg, Miss Murphy, so one of the legs need to be X. That's right. So 13 squared is 169 minus 25 leaves us with 144, which is a perfect square of 12. And that's what it asked for. 12. Nice. Okay, and see how it gets quicker and quicker because you immediately see that tangent line connect to a diameter or a radius, creating a right angle. They give us a 30. I see a 30 and a 90, so I'm immediately reminded of a 30, 60, 90 triangle, a very special right triangle, 30, 60, 90. And if you remember, let's just label it 30. 30 is the smallest angle. So across from the smallest is your X. And across from the 60 is that too small? your X rad 3. There we go. And 2X. So we have to apply the property of that special right triangle to this one. So what are they asking us to find here? CB. C, B. Well, I see that C, B this time is half of the diameter. Yes, it is. So if we could find the whole diameter and cut it in half, we'd have our C, B. Well, since this is the 90, this is the 2X. This is the X. And then this whole thing should be the X rad 3, right? That's correct. So then if the 2X is 12, what should the X be? Six. If two X's is twelve, then one X is six. So then what should if X, X is six, then this X over here will be six also. Six so rad three. So it'd be six rad three, and what would be half of six? Half of six is three. So this is three rad three. Now you might be asking, why didn't Mrs. Talhami divide the radical three? So, it's just rules of radicals. When you're dividing, you only can divide the coefficient by the denominator. Anything outside the radical gets divided with anything outside the radical. Inside with inside. It's kind of like like terms. Kind of like that, yep. All right, let's look at number seven. Now, with number seven, we have... It's telling us we have a right angle here, but we see a tangent at the end of a radius. So here's another right angle here. Oh, look at this. We have a right triangle with an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. Automatically, you should tell yourself that this could possibly be a Hills and Sass question because it's a right triangle. So here's my right triangle with an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse right here, okay? So don't look at this as two small right triangles. Let's look at this as one large. And we're trying to find CB, which is this right here. So we're trying to find what part of this triangle? That's the altitude. So since it's the altitude, we need to use SAS. So segment one over altitude equals altitude over segment two. Okay, so we don't know what the altitude is, so we're gonna leave that as X. And one segment is two, and the other segment is? Four. Four. And when we cross multiply, we'll get X squared equals eight. The square root of 8 is 2.82842712. So if I want to go two decimal places, 
Can you box that off, Mrs. Sohami? Can you put a box next to the two? X equals 2.82. Let's look at the look at the neighbor. It's an eight, which is five or higher. So we're going to round up to 2.83. Remember your rounding rules. Yay, a, a nice review of Hills and Sass. And then number eight, this is interesting. We have to find CB. Now, this is telling us, so see how you're not, not assuming here, Miss Murphy. This is telling us that these two are equal. So this got cut in half. So if I labeled them X, what would this whole thing be? Two X. And then since this is a radius and CB is also a radius, I can label it as X. And then I also have a tangent to a radius, so I have a right angle. Look, it's, it's almost like we've, we're co-teachers. We can complete each other's sentences. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> x, 2x, and oh boy. This looks to me like that special right triangle. It is. X 2x, x rad 3, that 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So if this is x rad 3, what number is representing x? x is a 10. So this is 10. That means this whole thing is 20. And it wanted us to give them CB, which we just said is 10 centimeters. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see what you did, that the 10 is the X. See how they're lined up. Yeah. Okay. So that was really going over a lot of different rules with right triangles <clears throat> and applying our rules of circles with tangents. And then this, uh, these last two questions are what we want to complete with you. Now, if you remember from uh, the previous page, we said if two tangents are drawn from the same external point, they are congruent. So that's an important fact that we are going to use here. So let's first identify our external points. So here's one external point. Because it's outside of the circle. So those are our three external points because they're outside. So the distance from the external point to the point on the circle, so this distance should be equal to this external point, the same one, to the other side of the circle. So this is a fact. And then so DB should be equal to BE. Uh, e. And CF should be equal to CE. CE. So very important that you do that because now if I read the problem, it says we have a triangle. ABC is circumscribed, is outside of a circle, circumscribed. And we have D, E, and F are points of tangency. So these are tangent lines. Let A, D equal 5. So let's label that. And E, B equal 5. And C, F equal 10. They're asking you to find the lengths of A, B, B, C, and C, A. So these are the full sides of these triangles. Wow. Okay, so let's apply the fact that AD is 5. That also means that AF is 5. And that would tell us that the whole segment AC or CA, same thing, is 15. Okay, they give us EB, so we know that if EB is 5, DB is also 5. And now we can find out AB, 5 plus 5 is 10. If FC is 10, that means that CE is 10. That means all of CB, that whole base, is 15. Now it's asking us to show that the triangle ABC is isosceles. Remember, isosceles means it's a triangle with two congruent sides. Do we have two sides here that have the same measure? 
So look at the triangle. Do we have two full sides that have the same measure? We do. We have AC and BC, both as 15. Therefore, this is isosceles, two congruent sides. Miss Murphy, did you know that these three dots mean therefore? That's a great little thing to note. Therefore, three dots means therefore. All right, and let's try one last question. Okay, so triangle ABC is circumscribed. Remember, scribe is something that gets written outside a circum about a circle. And D, E, and F are points of tangency. A, F equals 10. C, E equals 20. And B, D equals 30. And they're asking us, similarly to last time, to find A, B, B, C, and C, A. So these are all the full lengths. See and so we it. can apply those rules about if two tangents are drawn from the same external point, then they are congruent. So if A, F is 10, that means A, D is 10. If D, E is, uh, sorry, D, B is 30, that means EB is 30. If EC is 20, that means CF is 20. Now we could just find the sum to find the full lengths. Beautiful. It's like artwork, Mrs. Tohami. It is. Now, this is interesting, ready? So we have A, B is 40, B, C is 50, and C, A is 30. Now it wants us to show that it's A, B, C is a right triangle. Now if A, B, C is a right triangle, then what should be true about their sides? Well, I'm thinking 30, 40, 50, if we reduced that all as the same thing as 3, 4, 5, and I just know in my head that a 3, 4, 5 triangle is a right triangle. But if I apply it to the Pythagorean theorem, it should fit. So is 30 squared plus 40 squared equal to 50 squared? Is 900 plus 1,600 equal to 2,500? It certainly is. So you can prove, and that did not look like a right triangle to me. So again, just because something looks like it or doesn't look like it does not mean that it actually is or isn't. So facts, there, only facts can prove. Therefore, ABC is a right triangle. That's the math to show. All right, so if you have any questions about tangent lines and circles, please make sure to reach out to us. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Be well. Take care. Have a great Memorial Day weekend.